Bullock here. This uh, Algebra 2 lesson is on graphing quadratics in standard form, which is uh, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and I'll show you that in just a bit. All right, so let's just graph, remind us how to graph y equals x squared, okay? So uh, I got a table over here. Remember, you pause this whenever you want. I can kind of go fast, keep the video short. So when I plug in negative 3 and squared, I get 9. Negative 2 squared is 4, and so on. All these squared. Remember that from Algebra 1? And then when I graph negative 3, 9, I go to the left, 3, up 9, and put a point. To the left, 2, up 4, put a point. I'm just doing these points. And then negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, all these points right here. And they graph this parabola right there. Remember that from Algebra 1? Okay, so that's called a parent graph, y equals x squared. So we're going to move that up and down and make it wider and skinnier and make it uh, go upside down. So, uh, okay, so... And it, let me go back to this, you guys. When it's y equals x squared, that's a positive x squared. So this is positive. It opens up. And if you kind of, kind of think of a smiley face, it's making a smiley face because it's positive. If there was a negative in front of that, then that would make it open down with a, un, with a frowny face, okay? So negative if... Uh, I'll talk about that more in just a second, you guys. All right. So let's graph y equals 3x squared and compare that with y equals x squared. So I'm going to do graph plug in y equals 3x squared in for 3. Watch. When I plug in negative 3, negative 3 squared is positive 9, and then 9 times 3 is 27. I have to square them first, so this value would be 27. When I plug in negative 2, I have them coming up. I'll click it. Negative 2 squared is 4, and then 4 times 3 is 12. So I'll plug in 12 right there. Okay, so... Um, uh, there they are right there, and I'm not going to graph uh, negative 3, 27, because I don't have enough room to go up here, 27 up here. I'm not going to graph positive 3, 27, but these are certainly in my range right there. I just got to extend this a little bit to get up to this 12 right there. I already got it at 9. So it's said to compare it with y equals x squared. So there's y equals x squared. Now I'm going to graph these um, uh, five points right here, okay? So negative 2, 12. Negative 2, 12 is going to be way up here. All right, when I uh, plug that in, and there's uh, y equals uh, 3x squared. Okay, and it says to compare it, so let's compare it. They both have the same vertex. They have the same axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is this line right down the middle, as we discussed in our prior lessons. Okay, and um, uh, but the y equals 3x squared is, is skinnier. It's more narrow than the y equals x squared. That 3 is bigger, so it made it skinnier, made it go up faster. All right, let's do this. Y equals, uh, graph y equals negative 1 fourth x squared. And we're going to compare that with, and I already have it here, y equals x squared right there. All right, so I have a, a t-chart, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm going to plug in negative 6. Negative 6 squared is 36, and 36 times a negative 1 fourth is like 36 divided by negative 4, which is negative 9. Okay, so when I graph all of those guys, and then so I'm going to get negative 9 when I put in all uh, positive 6 squared. Let's do negative 4. Okay, I think I did that right here. Yeah, I did. Okay, so negative 4 squared is 16, and then 16 divided by negative 4 is negative 4. Okay, so I'll get a negative 4 here and here. When I plug in negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, and then 1 fourth of that is 1, but it's negative 1, and then finally 0. Okay, those are easy enough. I can graph those. I didn't graph the negative 9s right there because I didn't have enough room down there. Okay, so it says to compare it. All right, so uh, they have the same vertex. They have the same axis of symmetry. But uh, the one with the negative 1 fourth is reflected over the x-axis, and it's wider. The smaller the number in front of the x is, or the absolute value of this is, the more wide it's going to be. And the bigger the absolute value of this is, and the more skinny it's going to be. Okay, so that negative one-fourth re, uh, reflected it over the x-axis right here. Here's the x-axis, and it made it wider. All right, so um, let's graph y equals x squared plus 2. Okay, this is the same as y equals x squared, and y equals x squared is that regular parabola going down there, except it's going right there at plus 2. So we just put the vertex right there at plus 2, and there it is right there. Okay, so check this out too, you guys. If, as long as you know where the vertex is, it goes over 1, it goes up 1 squared over 2, up 2 squared, which is 4 from the vertex. So if I went over 3 from the vertex, it's going to go up 9. Okay? So, um, and same with this one. Let me go back to this guy right here. When I, it's this negative 1 fourth, once I knew where the vertex was, I go over 1, it goes uh, down, because it's negative, a fourth of 1 squared. Well, 1 squared is 1, a fourth of that is just 1. Over 2, 
2 squared is 4, but a fourth of that is 1. It would go down 1. If I went over 4, 4 squared is 16, but a fourth of that is only 4. Okay, it's always this number times 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared as I go over from the vertex. That's the quick way to do that. Your books never show you that. I just think it's a lot quicker. So there's that graph right there. All right, let's try this one here. Okay, now I know the vertex is going to be at 0, 3. It's going down because it's uh, negative one half right there, and it's going down a half of one squared, a half of two squared, a half of three squared as I go from the vertex over one, over two, over three. So here's the vertex at zero, three, over one. It's going down because it's negative. A half times one squared, well, one squared is one, and a half of that's one. So it only goes down a half. I'm sorry, half of that's a half. Only goes down a half. If I go over two, two squared is four, but a half of that is only two. It's only going to drop two on each side. So if you go over two, it only drops down two. If I went over three, three squared is nine, but a half of that's only four and a half. So it's going to take me down to right here in the half zones on both sides. Okay? And then so connect them up and there it is right there. Alright, so when you're graphing y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the axis of symmetry, I call it AOS of this graph, is just x equals opposite b over twice a. Okay, you guys have seen that before in, in the quadratic formula. Then you plug whatever that x value is into your into your uh, y equation right here to get your y coordinate. Okay, so I'm going to plug it right into here to get the y coordinate right there. Okay, so let's try this right here. So consider the graph uh, negative 2x squared plus 12x minus 7. Find the axis of symmetry. Okay, so opposite 12 over 2 times negative 2 gives me 3. So x equals 3 is the axis of symmetry. So to find the vertex, I plug in x equals 3 right there, right there, and I end up getting y equals 11, as long as you do the math correctly. So the vertex is at 3, 11. Okay, you'll be asked to do some of that. All right, let's graph this guy. Okay, so I'm going to find the axis of symmetry, which is 1. So there's the axis of symmetry right there. So opposite b over 2a. And then plug 1 into that equation to get your y coordinates. So the vertex is at... Uh, is at uh, 1, negative 1. Okay, so here it is, 1, negative 1. It's going up because it's positive. It's going up 3 times 1 squared, 3 times 2 squared. So check it out. Over 1, up 3 times 1 squared. Well, 1 squared is 1. 3 times that is 3. So I go up 3 on both sides. Over 2, 2 squared is 4, but I want to go up 3 times that, which is 12. So that's why I went way up there. So it's going to be a skinnier parabola right there. All right? Okay, how about this one? Okay, let's get uh, the vertex, uh, the axis of symmetry. X equals opposite B over twice times negative a half. Well, 2 times negative a half is negative 1. Negative 2 over negative 1 is 2. So I'm going to plug in 2 right there and right there to get my Y coordinate. Okay, whoops, this should say Y equals, you guys. This should say Y equals, okay? I don't know if the last one said it or not, but it should say Y equals, okay? y equals negative 1 half x squared plus 2x plus 3. All right, so I'm going to plug in um, uh, 2, and when I plug in 2, I get 5. So the vertex is out there at 2, 5. This is going down because it's negative. It's going down a half of 1 squared, a half of 2 squared. So over 1, 1 squared is 1, a half of that's only a half. It's only going to drop a half on both sides. Over 2 from the vertex, 2 squared is 4, but a half of that's only 2. It's only going to take me right there and right there on both sides. Over 3, 3 squared is 9, a half of that's 4 and a half, and so on and so on. Okay? All right, so then you can connect them up, and there it is right there. All right, what else do I have for you? Okay, so in the equation, uh, <clears throat> that's not a negative sign, that's a dash sign. If A is positive, then the graph opens up. It, it has a smiley face. It opens up, and so it's going to be a positive smiley face. And so when it opens up, it's going to have a minimum value. It's going to be at the bottom right there. And your y co and your y coordinate of the vertex is your minimum value. If it's uh, less than zero, which means it's negative, it's going to be an unhappy face. Okay, So it's going to be a sad face. It's going to open down. And that means it'll have a maximum point right there. And the maximum is also your y-coordinate. So here's one of the graphs that we did right there. This one opened up, so it had a minimum value. And the minimum value was my y-coordinate. This is at 1, negative 1, so that's y equals negative 1. When I had this graph right here, this one had a maximum at 5 right there. Alrighty, and then if you're in my Algebra 2 class, I would probably assign you something like that.